So I have a little idea. I went to Barnes and Nobles today and I saw these on I don't know if they're on clearance or just on sale. They're typically ten dollars a piece and they were five ninety eight a piece. And there are twenty uh, in each, so that's a total of sixty of these coloring pages. They're pretty decent size uh, type of cardstock, and they are animals, uh, water animals, and birds. Um, and so I thought, hmm, self. You've been wanting to do something a little bit meditative, getting a cup of tea, um, pausing for a minute, doing something um, with color, but not having to think about doing a painting. This might be a really cool way to do that. So what my thought is, is to pull all of these out because they're just in here. You know, they're made to be pulled out when you decide to color them and look at it has a thing on the back, it has their name, and it has a little bit about them, which could also uh, go into play nicely with an oracle. I have these beautiful polychromos that were given to me. Um, I also have Albert Schwar, Albert, Albert Dwar <laughs> watercolor pencils, and I was a little bit like torn between the two because I really do love watercolor, but I really don't want the paper to get bent at all from the use of water. So I, my thought is to go this route where just no water is involved. So what I was thinking was that, again, I would pull these out. I'm hoping they come out nicely without any yes. So what I'm thinking is to pull all of these out. I think I'm going to round the corners of them. Um, I mean, it really is nicely thick paper. And shuffle them all together. And when I need to sit down with a cup of tea, I can literally pull an oracle card, um, have the message of the animal, which I work with animals a lot. That wouldn't be very difficult. And then, and then color it which I think is really going to be cool. Okay, I successfully pulled out the animals other than it was kind of bending the corners a little bit. So I thought I would get fancy and I ripped the, the cat, which is a beautiful Bengal cat. There are cats in here like tigers and things, which isn't the same, but I'm not going to probably buy another one of these just to get the Bengal cat. No! So I shall have 59 cards, but I can use this as a test, which is not 100% a horrible thing. I'm just trying to just roll with it because things happen and we can't get too freaked out about things. So I'm going to pull the rest of these out. I have to say I am particularly fond of the birds. Like these are really beautiful. I know that this person, which I think is actually a woman, Georgie Woolridge, has bigger coloring books. But I'll be honest with you, I love to color. So our, our family are big colorers. We always have been. Um, age does not matter in terms of coloring. Um, as I said with um, playing King's Corners and playing cards, we did spend a lot of time in the hospital. And so bringing along coloring books uh, was definitely uh, on our thing to do. So we love coloring in my family. I colored all through high school. It was not something I just did when I was a kid. And I mean, look, a common tailor bird. Look at that. Um, so I do love to color, but I don't like to do really large, intricate coloring pages because I d often don't have that big oh no okay I gotta fix something something's starting to catch it um, I don't really have the time for one thing and if they're too intricate um, I, it just has a hard time with my eyesight so um, I just thought these were the perfect size I didn't want something to be feel pressure fill oh my gosh I love the little robin 
Yeah, the birds are definitely my favorite, although I do love the other ones as well. Um, oh, blue chit. So I just thought, you know, when I just want to grab a cup of tea, this is um, Peppermint Peak, which is my new favorite at the moment. It's a black tea, this peppermint, which is really hard to find, I know, because I looked. Mm. And just do something relaxing, but it can also be Oracle, because I work, if you watch my channel, you know, if there is a animal, oops, something's ripping, see sometimes it starts to split, and I have to be, there's probably some really smart way to do this so that doesn't happen. My thinking is, although I do really like the, I think that can be part of the oracle, I could always back these at the end uh, when everything is done, a la Veronica Jude, look at that, so that's, hmm, that's a kingfisher, no, that's a kookaburra. That's probably kingfisher, maybe. Oh. But yeah, I'm a, the birds just like, I, I just love the birds. I would be very happy if my first pull is a bird. Okay, so that's that. A couple little ripped areas, not perfect, but that's okay. Um, if you can t see, these aren't like supposed to be realistic, although they look really beautifully rendered and realistically rendered, but the textures have, you know, like you can see these designs and things. They're not meant to exactly replicate. Like, for example, there are little tiny flowers that are making this up, which is really, I think, really pretty like that. See how there are like sunflowers in the back, which is so beautiful. So they're not, you know, they're, they feel very realistic, but then at the same time, they are rendered. It feels like the uh, C and the C ones aren't perfectly the same. Uh, they are, but they're a little rougher. You can kind of see the difference, which I wish that wasn't the case. But I think once they're all mixed in, they'll be okay. Now, what I'm thinking, I'm thinking I might cut the end. So I just want to see, oh yeah, that large size, I think, because these are such big cards, I think that large size will be nice. That will make them easier to shuffle. So I'm going to kind of go through and cut all the corners here. And I'll be back in the speed and magic of the internet. Okay, so I have corner rounded everything. I also did a little testing. So we'll we'll come back to that. Oh no, I broke the oh no I didn't just good. I'm gonna have to organize all that. But my thinking is we shall see. These are definitely a large size. Oh yeah, look at that nice shuffle. I can obviously turn them this way to keep them from getting too bent. Kind of back and forth. Definitely a handful to overhand because these are quite, quite large. But um, they're they kind of remind me of my um, my Weaver's Oracle and a couple other larger ones like this. And you know, when you get larger ones, you can either go from the side like that if they're thin enough or also you can go from the corners right you can literally just whoops not very I don't do that very often but you can go from the corners and get a shuffle in as well and so my thinking is is that I would just choose one 
Let's see, that's gonna be hard. I, I side split. That's gonna be really hard with this, right? So I can, I can just, you know, mindfully choose one and use that as, you know, I could even span them out, just kind of riffle through and stop when I feel like it and pick that one, however I'm gonna do that. And then pick one out to work with. I kind of messed with this one a little bit, just with, uh, you know, to see, I wanted the colors at least to be able to stand out and these, uh, Polychromos are amazing, so I'm pretty. That's I've decided to just do that and not do any watercolor. Um, I also obviously use it to test that corner rounder, um, and then you know, if sometimes I may get it done in one setting, and other times you know I'll just stick with that animal energy while I kind of work on it here and there. Striped Marlin, right? And just kind of work my way through uh, and see what I get uh, in order to work with these. So we'll see. I think this sounds like really nice. Again, they're small, they're manageable, they're animal energy, which is something that I really love to work with. And, um, that striped marlin wants to come out, right? Um, you know, I could even just do that. Like, it's kind of hard to, for me to split. I could just shuffle, 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 not really paying attention, right? Until I just kind of stop where I want to stop and start working with that. Like, there's a lot of ways that you can pick from large decks. Um, especially when you're only looking to pick one card. Um, you can just shuffle until you're kind of where you feel like uh, you should stop. And then, um, you know, just uh, pull that, pull that. And, you know, it's not that hard. Um, yeah, you know, I know that there is obviously writing on the back or there is, you know, the writing here on the back, or obviously you're looking at the image, but you just don't look, right? It's really not too difficult to just let things kind of be what they are and look up, think about, you know, close your eyes. It's a little hard to close my eyes, but close your eyes, think about like what would be um, uh, energy that you should work with or that I should work with today and turn it over and there is a beautiful kookaburra. So I think I'm not, I think that I'm not going to be overly concerned about like color uh, being super accurate but what I can do is um, A, we can read the back Kookaburras are species of kingfisher found in Australia and New Guinea. The birds are about 13 uh, and 3 fourths inches in length on average and sport vivid blue speckled wings and a long sharp beak. The name kookaburra echoes the bird's call which has a quality of bubbling laughter. They are equally at home in the port, the forest land or the savanna as well as the suburban areas. Now of course this has all kinds of connections for me. Uh, because my, I used to sing my kids the kookaburra song. Kookaburra sits in the old gum tree. Merry, merry king of the jungle. He laugh, kookaburra laugh. Kookaburra save some there for me. Right? So I have lots of memories of obviously singing that with my kids. Um, which has got a very pleasant memories and con connotations. But I can actually look up. What I like to do with animals, um, if you are Kookaburra, Kookaburra, if you are looking to work with animal energy and you're not sure, um, like how how you would relate that particular animal, there's a couple things you can do. A, you can just look up like spirit animal, animal medicine animal energy for a particular um, animal. Now this has to do with laughter because they are known for their laughing call. So you can look up a video on that. Um, 
they a, a lot of things are talking about conquering your fear by turn by laughing and turning that laughter that whenever I feel afraid I hold my head erect and whistle a happy tune so no one will suspect I'm afraid right so laugh and you're going to conquer your fears that way so you can look up that the other thing that you can do is look up kook bear burra uh lore so this would be like if it would turn uh what they might have uh, in terms of um of folk tales and lore surrounding an animal uh, i'm just skimming skimming it right here to see if i can see big brown permanent group territories they defend them um, so they're very def they defend their areas very strongly. Um, they have flights called trapeze flights. Uh, they hunt from the perch. So you can read all about them as their actual, you know, what they do in the wild, because that's going to give you ideas about defense and about kind of staying up on a perch and watching and then diving down. Um, this also says um, they're called. Uh, the alarm bird um, uh, as well. Australia's military adopted the cuckoo bear as its emblem on naval, air force, and army insignias, and so on and such. So you can look up natural and the natural things that they do in the wild. Look up if there is any animal medicine lore surrounding them. Are there any folk tales or folklore around them? And that can all give you um, connotations to working with an animal that and, you know, watch some videos and watch them. How do they move? How do they fly? What are they doing? What do they sound like? What are their colors? Right? Um, and so you can come up with a lot of things uh, that way to start to associate with them. Uh, of course, looking up an image is helpful if you're like me and you're going to be um, uh, kookaburra. And then just hit images. And you can see that they're actually this beautiful like pale colors and then have this beautiful blues in the wings. Let's see if I can find a so browns and blues, like look. Dark brown, oh, my iPad died. But dark browns and then blues in uh, very specifically in the wings and the tail areas. But then having some light brown, some dark brown. So you can get some colors, uh, color ideas that way. So um, yeah, so I'm really excited to give this a go. Uh, I think I'll leave Mr. Kookaburra out and start with him. And um, although it's very late, so I probably won't start with him tonight. Um, and uh, yeah, I think this would be a fun project to do that isn't stressful, that's connective to animals, that's beautiful colors, and is relaxing. It's not a huge project. Um, you know, I can give some coloring tips as we go, but if you always start kind of with your lightest, you can do large swatches of color and then come in and do the darker colors over top um, that make things go by even more easily. So, um, okay, so just to wrap up the video, this is my first guy, which is a kookaburra. I definitely want to... Um, look into some solvent to smooth out some areas uh, blend out with and I've got to figure out what uh, those may be um, I also need to not be trying to color on <laughs> this surface I need to put it on a board like I do with watercolor paintings but it was enjoyable you know I spent some time I have to say that I um, enjoyed spending time with the kookaburra and um, trying to pull this back up. Uh, looking at some of the images, you know, they're very pale browns and then dark browns and, uh, you know, and then those beautiful blues that come out. Uh, so, yeah, again, I think it offers a chance to really kind of sit with a particular animal. Uh, I looked up some videos, listened to some of their calls and that kind of stuff and so I personally think this is going to be a great way 
to move this over to kind of sit with all of these uh, animals and, and as I you know I'm gonna put this back in, in here as I finish it um, but I, I did smudge I was trying to do some uh, blending more with my finger because these do blend out nicely but I found that to be a mistake because they would actually uh, kind of blend out onto the white so I need to you know lessons learned the first time around um, and again I think I would like some kind of probably if I kept adding layers is my guess is it would but then it would make it darker so because I know you can blend these together and make smooth things by burnishing which will cause um, but that in the process of doing that you're also darkening it so I do think that I want to just see about some solvents for some any smoothing out or blending areas that I would want to do um, you know just in areas that stand out to me which for me is this back area where again I'm guessing I what I need to do is just continue to add layers um, but again this is not for me it's less about the you know perfect rendition of coloring and more about something to zone down have a cup of tea relax sit with the energy of the animal and then by the time I get a deck done uh, or I get all these cards done like that's going to be those animals are going to be ones that I have watched videos on looked at lots of pictures of uh, watched to how they fly watch listen to what they sound like I thought about what they might mean in a message um, like this one I would have gone with the laughter as, as we do in a lot of them but now I do think about how uh, protective and defensive they can be um, and those types of energies as well and that sort of laughing in the face of death kind of vibe uh, versus more trickstery kind of vibe so you know that's going to only expand uh, my feeling on certain animals in terms of the energy that they might bring to the table. So, anyways, I hope you enjoyed this. Again, uh, these were using uh, mini, they're called min, mini mindful cards. I'm assuming you can probably find these. I mean, look at how pretty that's done. Um, that's going to take some sharpened pencils um, but I'm sure that you can probably find these on Amazon I can't wait I don't even remember seeing that one um, you know that's for me because it was 15 16 7 18 but then I had a my membership which is 10% off the whole thing so um, with tax um, I think it was right around $20 for a 60 card deck um, that will provide a lot of enjoyment over the time. I think that is well worth a deal. Now, of course, I already had the colored pencils, so uh, that certainly helps. And there's part of me that's still kind of like, oh, maybe I should use my watercolor pencils because then that I could very easily with water smooth them out. But I just really don't want to mess with um, getting the card stock because um, it's not um, really labeled for watercolor. Um, yeah, it's not labeled for watercolor. So I don't really want to get the paper to start getting wobbly and warpy. So I think I will just look. I know there are blender pencils. Uh, Prismacolor I know has a really good blender pencil and I know there's solvents that you can also use to blend so I'm definitely going to look into those um, also a way to store um, all of this where they stay kind of in their color groupings more um, I found that I had another box a lovely lady who um, sent me these um, she had another box that had um, extras, like du du these are duplicates, but there were a whole bunch more because I was thinking, oh, I need to go buy some more because there wasn't a lot of shades of blue. Um, obviously, that's um, not the, the case. So I'm just going to look for some kind of a blender 
uh, at this point. But I'm rambling. I'm rambling. I uh, hope you enjoyed this. Uh, maybe you'll find these around your area and you can do something similar. But I think it's great to just think about ways that we can kind of slow down a little bit. And it doesn't have to be these huge big pages that are overwhelming for us, some of us that don't have a ton of time. And as I said, some of them are too difficult on my eyes, even with my current glasses anyways. So this to me was is the right size and the right intricacy level um, that allows me to enjoy it again. Um, my daughter has piles of coloring books. I gave her most of the coloring books that I have, but um, she's got piles of coloring books and my whole family loves to color. My mom has always colored with us. I think she's the one who started it. And so yeah, there we go. I'm gonna stop rambling, bye.